Hello, Regira. How are you? Goodbye, Regira. So long. And hello again, Regira. Do you have anything for me? No, you don't. Hello once again. Do you have anything for me now? Yes, you do. You have a blue healing potion. Thank you very much. It's not like we have a massive pile of 51 of them and a pile of 20 of them here. And it's not like I've been talking to you for hours on end to try and get uh, piles of hundreds of them so that we can sell them all back to you and maybe I might have been doing that. Just a little, but it was for a very good cause as I'm about to show you right now. Welcome back, folks, to Let's Replay Albion. And when last we left off, I spent a couple of hours training in that area in Amajo. And now Tom is level 50. And so is Dra. And so is Syrah. And so is Melthus, who finally got a second attack at level 42. And so is Harriet. And so is Joe, who got a second attack at level 20, a third at level 30, and a fourth at level 40. The entire party is now maximum level, and Tom has the highest amount of hit points at 255 at the moment, which is fantastic. He also has maximum close range, long range, and critical hit training. He hasn't leveled up any lockpick, and he doesn't actually have enough uh, training points to get that to maximum. Joe has more than enough training points at 147, and can only actually gain 19 more skill points, period. The only thing that's unfortunate is that, um, considering Melthus can't talk, he can't get any critical hit training whatsoever, which was actually a blessing in disguise, because that meant that I didn't need to get 4,750 golds worth of blue healing potions, so that he could train that. I mean, I went and uh, got all of those healing potions, which took a long time, a lot longer than actually training everyone up to level 50. I also found out that the healing spell from Melthus is a really effective spell. When it's at maximum, it restores about 85-86 health at the moment. That is far more than the 13 health it costs to cast, which means that Melthus could bring everyone back from unconsciousness and bring himself back from near death, even if he only has a tiny amount of health. As long as he has 14 health, he can get everyone back to full health, which is really good. And you may be wondering why I'm indicating to this area here. While I was over by Regira getting a lot of healing potions, it really did take a very long time, I saw an guy just walk around here. That was really unusual, and I wondered uh, how the guy managed to get over there. I found that the game started uh, doing weird things after a couple of hours of being on, like uh, the mouse got stuck eventually, and uh, other things like that. But if we watch this Iskai, indeed, the Iskai can just walk into the wall here. Which implies that this wall isn't properly coded and won't stop you from walking past. Which uh, allows you to get beyond the confines of the map. It uh, doesn't really do very much, however, because there's nothing here. And if you give me one moment, I will be right back. We have returned! Apologies for the interruption there, but we're going to say goodbye to Regira as we are never going to come back to Jiranar. And we got no healing potion for saying that. Ah well, I think we have enough to be able to finish the game. And because I found out that the uh, healing spell from Melthus is so good that he could just heal himself to full every time he cast Demon Exodus on those animals, we have a lot of the uh, spell restoring uh, potions left so that we don't need any more of them either. And all the money that we're holding right now really doesn't serve that much purpose as there isn't really that much more we need to buy. I could have got a little bit more money and got a uh, bolt rifle for Joe, but we're going to be using a different weapon with him eventually. I've actually gone and given him the pistol because he can actually use it. He's one of the three characters that can, and we will be using that eventually, but not right now. Have I also sorted out the combat positioning? I think I should. Yes, I have. I've moved Melthus up to the front row there, because Melthus is actually very durable. He has a ridiculous amount of armor. Even though he's only using a light chain mail, he has 47 protection. I might actually go and get him some heavy chain mail, just so that we can get that up to 49. It'll make him the second most defensive character in our party, which is surprising considering the fact that he is primarily a spellcaster. He actually has really good um, close range combat skill for a spellcaster. Hello there, Krondir! How are you? 
we're going to defeat you right now. We really don't need to put that much effort into it. In fact, we don't even need to have a Tom and Dre attack whatsoever. Here we go! You're about to be defeated, and defeated you were. There really is no reason to grab that, and there's really no reason to be carrying this piece of meat here, or this Crondir tribe, because we're not going to be using them whatsoever, and we're not going to be selling them anyway. Alright, up we go, because we need to go to a Marjo. It is the area where you can get access to the final dungeon in the game, and it's also where we're going to be doing a few things that I uh, didn't notice before. And this is what the maximum light spell does, by the way. You don't even need Tom or this guy to be uh, leading the party in particular, because uh, the light is exactly the same. Alright, in we go, and to a Marjo. Excellent. We are now here, and we're going to be going to uh, see a few places, but it is rather dark, so we might want to uh, rest before we do so. Can we rest here? Yes we can. We're resting for eight hours, which is wonderful. It is now morning. We're going to quickly go into Amarjo, because we don't want the uh, effects of the desert heat to get to us. That will eventually happen, the amount of trips that you go uh, in and out of that uh, cavern. It will happen at some point. The first thing we want to do is we want to go and get some heavy chain mail here for Malthus, because we do have the money to do so. Hello there! How are you? Are you well? We'd like to look at your weapons and armour, and we would like to sell this armour here. Or we could just pass it over to someone for now, but either way, this is 884 gold, very well spent. He most certainly is overburdened right now, but he won't be for very long. I was tempted to swap the armour that Joe has uh, with Melthus, but I actually think it's a good idea to uh, give that over to um, give that to Melthus and have Joe keep the heavy armour. I think we're going to keep the light armour here on Harriet, because her uh, long range skill is bad enough that um, she definitely needs those few points of uh, difference that wearing light armour has as opposed to heavy armour. We'll uh, sell this armour back, mainly because we don't need it anymore. There we go. 270 coins, that is fine. But what else can we do here apart from go straight to the end, I hear you ask? Well, the first thing we can do is we can go to an area that I haven't actually been to. There is a whole other building here that isn't indicated on the map, and it is rather important for a few minor things, and also a tree is getting in my way. So I'm going to go this way instead. There we go, it is actually in here. Here is the Diamond Polishers Guild. And there is something on the floor, a beautiful ornament embedded in the ground. The symbol indicates that this is the Guild of the Diamond Polishers. We're going to be looking around here quite a bit, and talking to you, for instance. Hello, Schemadin. I hope you're here on business. What is your profession? I polish rough jewels and make jewellery out of them, or I sell them as they are. Well, what do you have? He has a lot of gems, and he also has a few magic things as well. He has a protection amulet that is very reasonably priced, and a luck chain, which we're certainly going to not be getting because we already have a spare of both of them. But if you needed any of these, here is where you can go to get them, and also to sell many uh, gems that you have, and I haven't been doing that, so never mind. Thanks for the conversation. Farewell. There are a lot of people we can talk to here. We can also use an item on this, but we'll be doing that a little bit later. Right now we're going to be exploring this uh, building and talking to everyone, because here is where you train a skill that I've never trained before. Please do not touch the jewels in the display, is written on the shield. Fair enough. Anyone here? Hello, how are you? I'm not allowed to talk with strangers, but I must always be polite. Fair enough. Anyone here to say hello to? The answer is yes there is! Hello! Do you want to buy something? That would sure please Uncle uh, Makuno. His eye always shines when he sells something. Oops, when he finds out I told you this, he'll be angry. Please don't say anything. Don't worry, we won't. Anyone in here? The answer is I can't actually path towards that door right now. There we go! Anyone in here? No, no there isn't. Is there anyone in here? There seems to be. I am Koskin's wife. I do the housekeeping and cook for the guild members. Fair enough. And who are you? Schema Din. Are you looking for someone? Can I help you in some other way? If you have special questions, you should ask Koskin. He is the leader of the guild and can tell you whatever you need to know. 
I wonder if you are the leader of the guild? Well, either way, we're going to find out. In here is nothing of any importance whatsoever. Hello there, how are you? Are you well? We're going to talk to you. Ah, it's the leader of the guild. Welcome to the Diamond Polishers Guild. What is your profession? I am a diamond polisher. Well, what do you know about diamond polishers? Our guild has a long tradition. All of our knowledge and the experience of many years are reproduced in our masterpieces, which are displayed in the large case. If you're looking for an expert in precious stones, you can find him here. There are display rooms, workshops, and living quarters. As far as precious stones are concerned, I will gladly give you advice. What kind of advice will you give? What are you most interested in? How we polish the stones, or are you more interested in the members of our guild? Would you like to know something about collectors, or about our prices? That is a lot of stuff we can talk about here. Let's talk about the uh, polishing itself. First, the miners send us rough stones, which are secondary products of the mine doors. These stones are sorted according to size, type, and purpose, and then they're finished. Some stones are cut into smaller stones, if, for example, they have flaws. We then sell the stones into chain, or set the stones rather, into chains, rings, and other jewelry. Other stones are improved through polishing and are immediately sold in their original form. You can see many examples of these preparations in our display case. If you would like to buy stones or other items, then please see uh, Mikuno. He is always in the display room. He's an experienced polisher and has been here for a long time. I'm sure you'll recognize him. There's a lot of stuff we can talk about. Let's talk about him. Makuno is the oldest diamond polisher in our guild. He does not polish anymore, but can give you excellent advice and is very familiar with all precious stones. You usually find him in the display area where he takes care of the stones and jewelry. He's always the one to see uh, when you want to buy something. Oh, uh, yes. He is somewhat reserved, but don't let that scare you off. Many people uh, have feel that he is only he has only money on his mind, but that isn't entirely so. That is uh, an interesting uh, way of wording that sentence. Let's uh, talk about something else now. What about the prices? Since we produce things that one doesn't actually need to live, we can demand a bit more money. That is why only rich people buy from us. But we, we're not really rich. It takes a long time to polish a stone, and the prices the miners charge of the rough stones are quite high. And people do not buy precious stones and jewels like they do food. Unless they eat them, which I hope they don't. Let's talk about the miners. Maybe you've already heard that from someone else. Since the miners are the only ones who can get the rough stones and ores out of the earth, we're dependent on them. We really don't know what to do about this. Ejir, an equipment maker, is supposedly trying to mine ore himself. Please let this information stay between us. I don't believe that he's had much success, since the miners are the only ones who can perform the ritual to placate Mother Earth. All the old proverbs and customs say that anyone who does not do so will no longer lead a happy life. Even though many things change in our world and the equipment makers are open to progress, the old tradition should not be forgotten. At least that is my opinion. Fair enough, let's talk about that ritual. Only the Mountain Priest can conduct this ritual. It placates Mother Earth and it permits us to open the earth and mine ores and jewels. However, we can take no more than the Goddess allows us. Naturally, the ritual is a well-kept secret and no one will disclose to you. Well, fortunately, we kind of stole that information, so, uh, we don't need to worry about that anymore. Well, at least, uh, maybe the diamond polishers don't. Let's ask about the members. Just talk to the people. Except for Mikuno. All of them are very talkative. We don't have anything against you going into our rooms, but please don't disturb us during our polishing. Naturally, not all of the people are present, but you can always take a look. And we will. Let's talk about experience. You need a lot of experience to do this work. If you like, you can try and polish a stone yourself. Have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> but as with everything else, you can only get good results by practicing. Fortunately, you could learn a lot from teachers and trainers. A trainer? I don't think you'd like to become diamond polishers, since then you would have to settle down and stay here. If you'd like to learn something, then you can go to the equipment makers. They're specialists in fine locks. The problem is they don't always readily pass on their knowledge. I think uh, Camilo was an equipment maker originally. You could find him in our guild if he happens to be around. I believe he would show you if I asked him. He is extremely good with fine mechanisms. He makes locking mechanisms for all our valuable chains. Hint, hint. He is the one you want to talk to if you want to uh, learn lock picking. We'll remember that. What is the request here? Yes, good. I'll let uh, Camilo know when I see him. He'll certainly be able to teach you a few things. Thank you very much. Let's talk about the exhibition. 
you'll find a space to the left and right of the entrance. Feel free to look at everything there. If you'd like to buy something, see Mikuno. And what about collectors? That's a subject in and of itself. I only I know of only three collectors who live here in the city. They're all pretty uh, fanatical and weird, and dreamers as well. They live almost exclusively for their collections. You see, precious stones can have magic effects even if they aren't magic. When I find out how valuable a precious stone is, I no longer wonder what sacrifices the collectors made to get it. Naturally, you'll always find the greatest collection right here in our display. Perhaps you know all. He's a typical example of someone who could only think about precious stones. What about magic gems? Ooh, this is a long topic. Magical precious stones are an absolute rarity. I only know of very, very few which have any significant effect. The most famous magical stone is probably the Stone of a Thousand Visions. Ah, we have that! Makuno steadfastly maintains that the stone exists. I think it's just a fairy tale. According to the legend, if you believe in it, the person who possesses this stone can look into the minds of people and read their thoughts. Supposedly, the crystal will grow in size and rotate and whatnot. The usual stories, although I must confess that it would be nice to be able to read people's minds. Doesn't it ever occur to you how mysterious life really is? It is very mysterious. But I'm digressing again. Please excuse my philosophical inclinations. Mikuno is always telling me that our guild once had the stone, and then one night long ago an equipment maker stole it. Now they're experimenting with the stone in their dark cellars and are trying to find a way to use it. But there isn't any evidence for the stone's existence, let alone the theft. However, if you can find the stone and return it, I'd really be happy, that's for sure. Well, funnily enough, we have it. It's right here. What's that? That isn't... Where did you get that? It has to be a fake. That cannot be THE Stone of the Thousand Visions. Where did you find it? We got it out of the equipment maker's research centers. It was in a dust-covered chest. I don't believe it. If that's true, old Makunas' stories were right. I still can't believe it. However, if that's really the stone, and it appears to be, then you must set it in a large ornament in the reception hall. Makuno said that's the only way the stone can produce its effect. Why don't you try it out? And we will. Farewell. We have somebody here that we need to talk to, and we need to talk to them with uh, Joe specifically, because we need to get some lockpick training. Well, we don't actually need to get it, because after all, uh, he's pretty uh, high in that skill already. Schema did. Camilo is my name. I work on fine jewellery here in the workshop. My speciality is making tiny locks for necklaces and rings. They're actually so tiny you can hardly see them. You need a very steady hand and good tools to do this. But since I was originally an equipment maker, this is easy for me. Coscon told me you're looking for someone who will teach you how to master locks and keys. I don't want to let him down, so I'm prepared to show you. Would you like to practice picking locks and disarming traps? We would indeed. We would like to uh, train 19 points which will cost 294.5 coins. Indeed we want to train. Joe takes intensive training. You're welcome to come by again. And now he has maximum in uh, lock picking, which is good because if he uh, equips this it then goes up even more to 139. Let us merely say that he is now the best at lock picking in the game. If there's any traps that we need dealing with uh, we're going to send them Joe's way. Please do not bother me. I'm supposed to polish two more rubies today and I've no idea how I'm going to get it done by the end of the day. We most certainly will leave you in peace. There is one more thing that we need to do and uh, none of these have anything in them I think. We want to uh, put that uh, stone in this ornament. Let us go and do that shall we? Use item and put this in. And something has happened. Tom and the others stand in awe as the spinning jewel grows to ten times its original size. Clearly the jewel has magical powers, but what are they? According to the legend, whoever touches the stone can read the minds of others. Well, that is quite a nice effect, let us manipulate that. Tom touches the stone and tries to read someone's mind, but doesn't succeed in spite of his intense efforts. However, there is a restorative pleasant force which flows through his body. It pretty much heals you instead. Do you have anything to say in particular? You do not. Ah well, we've now put that item there, and that's pretty much all we're going to do here. But before we leave, we're going to save, because uh, there's something else that we can do, and we don't want to do that just yet. We want to um, 
or rather we don't want to do it uh, without saving, because there is something we can do that is not great at all. Let us open this up and then head out, because we're going to go to the Equipment Makers Guild here, and we're going to buy an item. We're going to buy quite a few of an item, while it is still open. Hello you, who's going to walk towards us? We have... Oh, you're not here this time. Fair enough. We're going to talk to the person that invented that uh, lotion or potion, I think it's a potion actually, that um, allows you to resist the heat of the desert. Apologies for the interruption there, we're getting a few of them in this video, but let's talk to you and get that uh, lotion, shall we? What do you know about this here? We'll just ask about it. Someone recommended my lotion to you? Hmm, very well. I'll sell you a bottle for 15 coins. A little bottle is usually sufficient for up to six people to use. We'd like five for 75 coins. We definitely want five of them. Thank you, it's guaranteed to help. Drink it every eight hours as you travel through the desert. We actually want to ask about that again, because there's really no harm in getting more of it. Because we're going to be going into the desert, and it is quite a long trek that we're going to be doing. We need to go and find the prison. But we have to set out at a particular time, and we definitely need enough of this item here that we can survive out there for a long time. If we have ten bottles of it, we can pretty much stay out there for days, and after all, there's really no need to hold on to money anymore, because we uh, don't need to uh, have it anymore for any other purpose. We still have a fair bit of it, we have about uh, 364 there, and is that actually all that we have? That is, I think, all that we have. Well, we're not going to need any more anyway. So I think when we come back, folks, we're going to go out into the desert at large, and we're going to go and do something a little optional. There are still a few optional things in the game. There was that uh, treasure cave back by Kurnos, and now there is going to the prison. There is definitely something to see there, but it's not something good. So I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.